Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to do it the very same problem. We're going to factor the very same problem using the formal method instead of the previous method. Now, how do we do that? Again, we draw a foil. And in the front, we write all the combinations in which we get the number 20. So the combinations would be 20 and 1 and 1 and 20, even though those are very unlikely combinations because the big number 20. Whenever you multiply the number 20, even with the number 1, you already get a number that's bigger than the middle term, so right away you realize those are very unlikely combinations. The next we could do is 10 and 2, and 2 and 10. It looks like I'm going to run out of room. I'm going to move my foil over just a little bit. Those are more likely scenarios, and then finally the combinations of 5 and 4, or 4 and 5, which are probably the most, prob uh, the most uh, probability combinations. On the other side, to get the number 2, it can only be 1 and 2, and 2 and 1. So since the middle term is 13, and when I multiply 10 times 2, I get 20, and multiply 10 times 1, I get 10, and 2 times 1, I get 2, so it looks like the most likely scenarios is when I look, when I use the numbers 4 and 5. 20 and 1, I'm, I don't think I'm going to need those because whenever I multiply the number 20 by even the number 1, I already have something that's bigger than 13. Same with 10 and 2. 10 times 2 is not very likely. 10 times 2 is, again, I get a number that's too big. So it's probably going to be one of these combinations right here. So right away with some quick thinking, you can eliminate a lot of the possibilities. So let's go ahead and try these right here. 5 times 2 gives me, that's 10. 4 times 1, that's 14. So it's not equal to 13, so I don't need that. How about um, uh, 5 times 1, that would be 5. And 4 times 2, that would be 8. That gives me 13, which is the right number I need. So what I did was I went 5 times 1, and notice I multiply 5 times 1, so I go in this direction. I multiply 4 times 2, I go in this direction. So 5 multiplied times 1, and 4 multiplied times 2 gave me the correct combination. 5 times 1 is 5, 4 times 2 is 8, add them together, I get 13. I found the right set. So what I do now is go ahead and write this as a factored form. I end up with 5x plus 2, multiply that times 4x plus 1. And that is the factored form of my original problem. Again, the foil method can be a nice quick method, especially if you don't automatically, without thinking, just go through all the possible combinations. You simply realize that these big numbers simply are too big to give me the correct middle term, and you right away could do what we what it looks like are the most likely combinations that will give you the correct factored form. And that is how we do that, using the foil method. Hmm, I like the foil method. <laughs>